What's up everybody? I'm out here outside my latest property that I just took over last week. You guys saw the other one, which is now finished. And now this is the latest one that's going to be another money maker. This one, in all honesty, I was a little bit apprehensive about it. I had some doubts about a certain things. Um, but anyways, I'll walk you through that and we'll figure out uh, how I got through that. So here I'll give you a little scan of the outside of the property. Nothing to write home about. And uh, like we talked about previously, the neighborhood is key. I don't want to be in a super ritzy neighborhood. I want something middle of the road, blue collar, preferably on a busy street. This is not on a busy street, but nevertheless is still, you know, a, a middle class area. That's what I want. Rich people are going to complain. Like I said, they're going to complain. You're going to lose your Airbnb and then you're going to be looking for a new one. So I don't want to have to do the work twice. So anyways, now let's walk inside and check out what we got here. So here we're actually going to start with this unit. This property has three bedrooms in the main house, but then there is an ADU, which is an accessory dwelling unit. So this is a garage that was converted to living space. So I got a full kitchen here. As you can see, this thing is upgraded and very nice. Uh, washer dryer in here. You know, it's a standalone unit. Somebody could live here separately. Um, I'm going to rent this thing out only as a uh, single property possibly going to be able to rent it out at certain times just as this um, uh, studio unit, but um, that part is not clear yet. So here you see the bathroom. The bathroom is super nice. You got the rain head shower. Um, and then we're gonna go into the main house. The only time, just FYI, that I would rent out this individual unit would be if the main house is not rented and it's only on short notice. I don't want to uh, separate the groups in general. I would rather rent out the whole thing. There's more money in that for sure. So anyways, we walk in here in the main house into the living room. You can see here the hardwood floors. Again, there are things that I'm not going to do for a rental property. There are things that I can do to fix it up and make it look better for photos and bring guests in, but there are things that I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do the floors. Here we got this nice um, linoleum gray floor. It looks good. The kitchen also looks good. We got, uh, I don't know what this is, Caesar stone or something like that, Caesar stone or quartz countertops that look good. This is gonna photo well. Go over here, we got the laundry. Um, here we go to the bathroom. This bathroom, when I talked to the owner originally, this had like a 1970s vanity, dark wood. I was not willing to do that. I told him that was a deal breaker for me. So he installed that for me. So all these things are negotiable. You have to understand, the way I look at it when I'm talking to an owner, they, they're, they're lucky to be getting me to rent from them. You know, I'm paying a premium on the rent. I'm going to take good care of the property and, you know, it's a luxury for them. So I told him that I needed a new vanity. He didn't have a problem with it. And here we are. So here we walk over to the bedrooms. Here you have the second bathroom. Uh, you can see the bathroom's clean. Nothing to write home about, you know, not necessarily something I want to live in. But again, this is for people on vacation. They want something clean, something photos well. And um, that is basically all they're looking for. So standard bedrooms, really nothing to write home about right here. You got three bedrooms. They're all roughly the same size window here. And this window shoots out to the neighbors. I'm gonna put um, uh, uh, the sheer curtains right there so that you can't see into the neighbor. That is important. More importantly, I don't want the neighbors seeing into here. The less the neighbors know, the better off you are. Here we got a step down living room. Again, the um, fireplace right here was this old 1970s river rock. Again, I told the owner because I could, I told him, I said, look, this is a deal breaker for me. You got to paint this thing, make it look a little bit more modern. So here we have this light gray, which looks way better. It doesn't look like flashback from the 70s. Now it looks a little bit updated. Um, so here you got this weird brick paneling on the wall. I don't really care about it. It looks all right. It's going to look better in photos than um, what was probably this uh, original wood. Here we're going to step out to the back again. When I first came and looked at this property, this swimming pool was terrible. It was super old. It looked, it just looked disgusting. Anyways, there was green shit growing in there. Wasn't something I wanted. The green stuff you can clear up. You can make the pool look better. But nevertheless, so I was on the fence about it. The pool was not shining to me. I need that thing to look good in photos. I want people to enjoy it also when they come. So it's not just about the photos. The photos are going to get them in the door. But the five-star reviews are going to keep them coming back. So I told the owner, you know, there was a certain price I was willing to pay. 
at with the, the the swimming pool the way it was and i told him i would pay a premium if he redid the pool i knew he had thought about it the pool had some cracks in it so it was all negotiable and i told him i offered him 200 dollars more a month he's paying i don't know what he's paying seven eight thousand dollars i think to redo the swimming pool but he's going to recoup that pretty quickly you figure 200 dollars a month 2400 a year you know he's getting that back in three years that's pretty good he's making 30 percent on his money so um he understood that and now we're gonna have you can see it's all dug out here I even, he even told me, he even let me pick the color of the pool. So we're gonna go with the gray plaster with these blue tiles right here, which is gonna look fantastic. And then when we got into it, I even told him, then I came to him and I said, look, I'm paying you, um, what am I paying him? I'm paying him, I said, I'm paying you 6,100 with the new swimming pool. Originally we were at 5,900. So I'm paying him 6,100 for the new swimming pool. And then I said, if you're gonna put in a heater, I would be willing to pay a premium for that too. So he looked into it and I was offering him $150 a month for the pool heater. All of my houses, uh, I used to have houses with swimming pools with heaters. Right now I don't have any in the winter time. People still come and still enjoy the pool, but the reality is the heater adds a lot of value. So for $150 a month, that's gonna pay itself back real quick in the cold months here. So he's putting in a pool heater. So now we're at, we're at 6,100 plus the 150, I'm at 6,250, but I'm gonna have a brand new swimming pool with heater which is exactly what i'm looking for so this you know this property all in all i was reluctant i was very hesitant and he and i had to negotiate a little bit about the swimming pool what work he was going to do um, i offered to do some work as well so like some of the landscaping here that you can see uh this is going to be i'm just going to put gravel here and then you can see the back planters there um I'm gonna put gravel in there. I told him if he takes care of the swimming pool, I'm willing to take care of some of those small things. So this is also where I can provide um, some uh, value to the owners. I'm taking care of some improvements, things that they don't necessarily wanna do, but then there is some things that they're gonna do, some of the bigger ticket items. I'm gonna take care of the smaller ticket items that I can. So like I'm paying $600 here to landscape to put in this uh, gravel in the back. That's nothing to me. You know, I'm gonna get that back in just a couple nights rent. Here you also see this pergola, uh, whatever you want to call this patio cover. This thing looks terrible. It's cheap ass aluminum. These beams look terrible. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to case this in wood. I'm going to put, you know, one by eight or whatever it is on both sides. Screw that together, paint it, and this thing, and then also put a facing right there with the same kind of wood. This thing's going to look great. It's going to look totally modern. No one's even going to know that it's old and shitty from 1961. So this property, I'm paying more per month than I am for the other property. This one, I have four total bedrooms. I do have a pool heater. The other one, I think, shows a little bit better. And the other one is cheaper. So the other one is advantageous to me. This isn't, this isn't a, um, you know, this property is still going to make money, but some of them you have to review for their ability to still earn income, even though it's not as much as another one. So you can't always compare the two because as long as it's profitable for you and worth your time, then it's worth moving forward. So I made that calculation. This one was worth my time. I don't expect to make as much as I will on the other one, but then I'm also going to have a little bit of a trade-off in the winter months with the pool heater and being able to utilize that for revenue that time of year.